How's it going? Welcome to this video. Today's topic is handheld focus stacking and then merging this focus stack into one overall super sharp image in Photoshop. And the reason why I like doing this is because it allows me to spontaneously and flexibly perform focus stacks in the field without having to carry a tripod or setting up a focusing rail and then hoping for my subject to still be there. Instead I just walk to the flower or my subject, I take a focus stack and if the subject moves I relocate it and give it another try. Now the equipment I'm using for that is a Canon 5D Mark II because the 6D Mark II is filming so I'll be using the continuous mode. If your camera has a high-speed continuous mode I recommend using that to just keep the gaps in between images low and you also don't have to press the shutter button for every shot and that way your shots will be just aligned better. Second of all you're going to need a speed light to overcome motion blur. Um, alternatively of course you could shoot fairly wide open into, into um, with a bright light or into the sunlight or something like that but that would defeat the whole purpose of focus stacking. So you're going to need a speed light, a light modifier of some sort to redirect the light and ideally you will have a battery pack like this which holds an additional 8 AA batteries. You hook it up with your flash and now you're using 12 batteries instead of just 4 which keeps the recycling times really short. The lens I'm using is a manual 28 millimeter lens on reverse and that's about it. Let's get right into it. Now there's a couple techniques that I use to keep my camera steady when I perform a focus stack. Let's start with flimsy subjects such as this flower. As you see it's blowing around in the wind. There is always motion blur in the environment. So somehow you need to stabilize your subject and the way I typically do it is with the same hand that I use to stabilize the camera. I'll hold on to my subject and I'll use this part of my hand right here as a focusing rail that I drag the camera lens over. And that just allows me to get real good alignment in combination with stable focus. And this was really quite simple. It just takes a little bit of practice and then you know how to hold the camera, how to hold your subject. Now if you have a more solid subject such as a tree or a rock or you're even able to rest your elbows on the ground, then I recommend to do that because that way you just get even more stability in your shot. Um, when, I, when I have a solid subject where I can't rest my elbows on the ground, then I just use my hands to really stabilize the camera. And the hands don't even move the camera, they just press it firmly against my face and I'm going to use my head as sort of the third axis that actually moves the camera and that makes for ideal alignment. Now typically we get a bunch of candy striped leaf hoppers on that um, Brussels sprout plant behind us. So I'll see if I can take a nice shot. You will see how I take it and then I'll see you inside in Photoshop. One more thing though, if you shoot a focus tag, make sure that you take many, many, many photos, many more than you think you'll need, because you can never be sure that you've got every slice of the stack or that you've got every piece of that puzzle, so you really want to make sure that you've got every shot that matters, and the only way to get that confirmation is to overshoot your subject. Take 100 shots instead of 10, and then you've got every shot you need. <laughs> How lucky is that? There's a leaf hopper sitting right here, so I'm going to see if I can get a nice stack without scaring it off. Alright, I'm quite certain I got enough shots now. Um, the stack should be complete, at least around the head of the leaf hopper, which is all that I was hoping for. Um, when you fill up the buffer of your camera or your flash needs to recharge, try to not breathe at all, try to keep your body as stable as you can and then continue the stack when your equipment is ready. Another really good trick that I like to use is to focus on one of those little focusing points inside the viewfinder and then I try to align it with something in the background or with my subject if I center the subject and I just try to keep that focusing point and my subject as aligned as I can because that way I make sure that I'm really just moving the camera on this one axis. Now let's transfer these files onto the computer and stack them together.
All right, time for some post-processing slash focus stacking. Now, as you can see, I selected all my files already in Adobe Bridge and in the next step, we're going to load them into a stack in Photoshop by pressing the Files tab, go into the Script section and load files into stack. Now we're going to select all these images that we want to stack and whereas I typically attempt to automatically align source images, today we're not going to do that because with manual focus stacking Photoshop often will try to make the majority of the photo align and if the majority of the photo is background such as here Photoshop will focus on these lines and structures more than on the actual subject which can make for quite ugly transformation sometimes so I rather do that manually and in a controlled way. And the way to do this is to select all the layers that we now have, put it into a folder and duplicate that folder with command J. And in the next step we're just going to select our subject and nothing else in the frame. Then we're going to invert the selection with command shift I. And then we're going to delete this from every single layer in that new folder before we actually align the layers. And that way Photoshop doesn't have a choice but to actually focus on our subject because the background is gone. So let's go back to the folder, deactivate the background folder and go into the edit tab to auto align layers. Auto is right for this purpose and then we will see Photoshop working much better than if we use the whole layer. And that was pretty quick, I'm quite happy with it. Turn back on the background stack and by dragging down the opacity of the layer and then pressing Command T, we can grab the entire stack and move it back where it came from so it matches up with the background much better and it looks better already. In the next step, we're going to deactivate the background folder and open up this folder and we'll only have one layer activated. The way to do this is to press Alt and then that little eye emblem and then we go through all the layers bit by bit and manually check if there is something that we can paint in which isn't sharp in the layer underneath. So layers 1 and 2 are identical, let's skip it. In layer 3 again, we already have some hit. Now, as you can see, here is the eye in focus, here is more of the actual shoulder or wing blade in focus. <laughs> I don't know what you call that for insects like this. Anyway, so I'm going to put on a black layer mask, make it all disappear, and then using an eraser with a fairly hard edge, you can just draw in the bits that you think are better from the layer underneath. And I'm going to do this with all the layers, I'm going to fast forward the process, and then you'll see the result in a second. And there we go, the magic is done. Here we have an overall quite sharp image shot at f8 and as you can see we've got the very tip of the insect including its feeder in focus up to the head, past the head and even past the wings. Now if we deactivate the stacked layers and just have a look at the original layer we see that we can't even get the entire eyeball in focus at f8. And this is why this technique is so amazing. It allows you to increase the depth of field with no compromises, except for maybe five more minutes in the field and then another 10 minutes in Photoshop. But with a bit of practice, this becomes quite a fluent process. 
Uh, to me it's absolutely worth it. I love this image, I love having the possibility to perform a focus stack in the field. And if you feel like you learned something today or if you just enjoyed watching this video, please consider subscribing to this channel. Leave me a thumbs up, I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the near future with another video. Cheers!